We're going to do a quick hit video on a specific command, and this one happens to be the array command. In 2011 uh, version, Autodesk changed the array command to be no longer dialog box based. And so we need to go through and do a quick hit on both the rectangular and polar array. What I found is to make it easy, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick demonstration on it. We'll draw a small circle here. Uh, we'll make it two inches in diameter. And we'll use the array command. This one happens to be the rectangular array. If it's not listed, it's going to be on the drop down. I'll select a rectang or the rectangular array, select the object I'm going to pattern, which is the circle, right mouse click, and then it wants me to pick a second location. Well, it's not that critical and we'll explain that in a second. I'm just going to go ahead and left mouse click diagonally and you can see that point now provides me a set distance and a left mouse click again. At this point it now becomes critical because I can now type in the number of rows and the number of columns. That's where I want to be. This is where we get back a little bit to that dialog box input capability. So I'm going to pick rows. So how many rows do I want? Well, I want four rows. What's the distance between the rows? Well, what it's asking you for is the Y distance, not the X distance. That's the columns. Rows vertically are going to be Y. And of course, since positive Z or positive Y is uh, up towards the top of the screen, that's the way it's going to move. I'm going to go ahead and set, and we can type in 3.0. Hmm. Let's go 2.5. Hit the enter key, and there it is. Now, an elevation between the rows, an incrementing elevation between the rows. So if I wanted to actually make this 1 inch, then 2 inch, then 3 inch, I can actually increment, and that way it would be spaced farther and farther out the farther you got. So it's kind of like ripples in a pond. When you drop a pebble in a pond, the ripples continue to uh, expand, and they get farther and farther apart from the center of that location. I'm going to say zero and I'm going to do the same thing with the columns. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want four columns and I would like 2.50 inches between the columns. And at this point I can now, con I can now easily say that I've got uh, the exact distances that I'm looking for. So I wanted two and a half inches between each of the objects in both directions so it doesn't matter which way or which object I pick, it's two and a half inches in both directions, four columns, four rows. Now let's do the same thing with the polar array. Remember the key is keeping it simple. Choose the circle. We're again going to go ahead and type in a one inch um, radius or two inch diameter circle. This time we're going to do a polar array. I'm going to select the object, right mouse click, because we're done selecting the object. Now the center point of the array, and what I like typically to do if I don't already have a center point for that uh, location to be, I like to highlight the uh, center of my object or if I have to I'll draw a diagonal line if it's rectangular and use the midpoint location so that way I know that I'm working from that center of that object that I need to make the polar array with. Now I'm going to make the center of this object, uh, let's make this 4.75 inches to the right. So right now it says that it's 5.5, and, and you know that you can't just arbitrarily locate it. We need to type in that distance for accuracy. So we're going to type in 4.75, and now it's saying, well, how many items do I need? Or, and if we look at the bottom of the screen, I can specify the angle between the items or an expression. Well, right now it's saying that I'm going to get four items. Um, for that distance. Uh, and that could be four items for 360 degrees. Um, I can type in as many items as I'd like for this array to happen. And again, it will use the 360 degrees or 180 degrees if you're going to do, do that. But the key thing to look at here, it's always working counterclockwise. So just be aware of that, that the rotation is always counterclockwise. We're going to go ahead and type in the number of items. So I'm going to say that I'm going to have eight items. And it wants me to specify the angle to fill. Well, I'm going to say 360 degrees because I want eight items all the way around the circle. And like the rectangular array, I can now go back and change 
details. So if I need to add items or change the angle between the items, it's easy to do with this pop-up menu. That is the key to success. Don't get flustered when you start the polar or rectangular array. The key is when you get to this dialog at the end, go, you can go ahead and pick just about anything. As long as you get on the polar array, the center point distance or the radius distance of the polar location, the circular location, everything else works well. And even if you do mess it up, you can change the base point of that rotation. So you can even fix that. Well, have a great day. Short video hit. Take care.